Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm going to be talking to you about how to install, set up, test, and other things the PNY CS315HS. There are variations of this NVMe SSD, but it's a Gen 5 drive with two little fans that get particularly noisy, so stick around to find out how to sort that out later on. And this is a powerful little drive that will get you up to 12,000 megabytes per second read speed and comparable write speeds, assuming you're using the right motherboard. So it's important to make sure you're using a motherboard which supports NVMe Gen 5 drives, which this ASRock Live Mixer board does in the top port that you can see here. If you use it in a Gen 4 port, it'll only get Gen 4 speeds. You'll see that you need to remove the standard pre-installed heatsink, set the drive into the M2 port, which will probably be the top one, but it's worth checking your motherboard manual, and then screw it down with the included screw that comes with your motherboard, or alternatively, you'll have to purchase screws additionally from elsewhere. Then you need to run the cable to a system fan header or chassis fan header on the motherboard, as you can see I've done here, to sort of nestle that cable away. And then it's secured into the motherboard and you can put the motherboard into your system. Now naturally you could install it into your system if it's already in place, just make sure you power it off first. So you can add this as an additional drive to your motherboard, make sure your system's powered off and that you use the right port. Once that's done, we then turn it on, assuming you've connected it to a display, and then you want to go into the BIOS. So mash the delete key on your keyboard or F2 until the BIOS loads. And then hopefully once you get into the BIOS, you should see the drive listed under the boot priority section, which you can see here on the right hand side and on the devices list. So you should see that you have a number of different storage drives in there. The second one is the USB drive that I've created for installing Windows. So I want to show you two different things to keep in mind. One, if you're using this as your main drive, you can create a Windows installation drive, boot from that and then install it directly to the drive. If you've only got one drive in your system, that should be fairly straightforward and you should be able to get into Windows pretty easily. If, however, it's a secondary drive in your system and you already have Windows on a different disk, you might find you don't see the drive initially. So what you need to do is press the start key on your keyboard and then look for create and format hard disk partitions. This is under the disk management tool. Once you launch that, you should see the drive initialize and be listed as one of the drives you can use alongside the other ones. If this doesn't occur, then it may be a BIOS setting that's causing problems. And unfortunately, that varies from motherboard to motherboard, so it's hard to show you what that would be. But if you do see it, you should see it here listed as a black drive. Right click and then click to format with a new simple volume. Assign it a drive letter and then give it a name so that it'll appear in Windows Explorer and you'll be able to identify what it is. Now, the clip here I'm using is from a different drive, but the process is the same. You should then see it appear in Windows Explorer as an additional drive in your system that you can then use. So that's two different ways to use the drive in Windows, whether it's a standard OS drive or a separate drive. Now, another thing you want to do is to search for core isolation in Windows and then turn off memory integrity. Now this is the security thing, so you might not want to do this, but if you want to make the maximum amount of speed out of this drive, that is one setting that is worth changing because in Windows that can actually slow down your speeds. Also, if you go to the device manager and then go into the disk drives here and then find the drive, right click on it and go through the settings in here into policies, you want to turn off Windows write cache buffer flushing on the device as well. Now, this is a default setting that you may want to leave on, but if you want to make the most of speed, I find turning these two settings off can actually help with the speeds. I'd recommend testing to make sure your drive is running at the maximum speed. Download Crystal Disk Mark. It's a free tool. I'll leave a link to in the description. Follow the settings here and then basically run this tool as a benchmarking tool to check the speed you're getting. You can see I'm getting about 11,000 megabytes a second read speed and about nine writes. Note that if you're recording, it can cause problems, so you probably will get faster speeds. You can also use hardware monitor or hardware info to check the temperatures on it. Now, this drive is obviously designed with a large heat sink on it, and that's because Gen 5 drives can run quite hot. The fans on it will help keep it cool. However, what I found, and what you may well find, 
is that as standard, these fans run very loud. And I actually found that despite their size, they ran so fast and so loud that they were overpowering the other case fans in the system and made me think that the entire system was running very loudly and was a problem. So there is a solution to this. You can adjust the fan speed in the BIOS settings and tweak that. But you can also download a tool called Fan Control. Fan Control is a free tool you can use in Windows that you can then adjust the specific fan speed on. I would recommend doing this because you don't need the fans on that drive to be running at 100% all the time. If you tweak it and run the tests again to benchmark so that it put it under load, you can then make sure that it's not getting too hot and you're still getting the speeds that you should be, but hopefully reduce some of that overall volume. Hopefully this has been helpful in various different ways to you. If it has, let me know in the comments down below and check the description for more things that you might find useful. This has been the Provoke Brawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.